My name is Robert Quarles, and I've been given a moment to talk to you today about a polynomial time not polynomial. This polynomial was defined by Barnaton and Van der Veen, who also gave an algorithm that is computable in polynomial time. Uh, they show that the polynomial is closely related to the Alexander polynomial in a few key ways. And it is also strong uh, in a sort of empirical sense differentiating more knots through 12 crossings than the Homfly polynomial and Kavanaugh homology combined. It is also conjectured that a uh, normalization of it uh, is equal to a invariant that Rosansky defined, which relates to the coefficients of the colored Jones polynomial. So how do we build this? Well, we're gonna take our knot and we're going to divide it into a couple of basic pieces. We've got crossings and we've got turnaround points. And as long as you remember which arcs you're going to stitch together, you can recreate a knot from these basic pieces. Now we've got a couple of matrices. We've got a matrix Q that records the crossing information, W that records the stitching information, and C, uh, which is a correction term. They define uh, a matrix B, G, and H, which go on to give us polynomials that you define as sums over entries in these particular matrices. Once you have these two polynomials, you multiply them by the correction term and you have your not polynomial. For reference, here are a few of those for the uh, three crossing knots through the six crossing knots. Now, the normalization that they give is equal to minus t over one minus t squared times the z1 polynomial minus t times the Alexander polynomial times the derivative of the Alexander polynomial. And my conjecture is that you can take this normalized not polynomial and write it as a linear combination with integral coefficients of the squares of Conway polynomials minus one of a particular set of knots. And when we look at uh, this sort of expansion of polynomials, we quickly find out that <clears throat> the squares of Conway polynomials themselves can be written in this way as a linear combination of squares of Conway polynomials minus one for a very particular set of knots. And that has something to do with the nice symmetry properties that uh, this type of polynomial exhibits. And so what knots go into this set that are used to uh, generate all of these polynomials? Well, we've got the uh, alternating torus knots given by T2, 2, and plus one, the figure eight knot, and the connected sums given by the trefoil connected sum with the T2, 2, and plus one torus knots. So this is our set of knots, which we're going to use to generate everything else. Notice that there's only one knot of each crossing number in this set. And as it happens, we'll be able to, for an in-crossing knot, uh, we'll be able to build the polynomial for that in-crossing knot using knots with, which have no more than in-crossings from this set. So some very nice properties there. So once again, what we're trying to do is write row one, their normalization uh, as a sum of squares of Conway polynomials minus one with integral coefficients uh, of knots from this particular set. And what you can do is you could write this in terms of Alexander polynomials as well, that's equivalent. And you can also write it uh, in terms of the original polynomial instead of the normalization. All of these things are basically the same. And what I was able to show is that, well, for the family of T to 2P plus one torus knots, you can write them as a linear combination of squares of Alexander polynomials minus one. It relies on P copies of the torus knot you were looking at and one copy of all of the other torus knots of lower crossing number. And here are a couple of those. Here is everything through six crossings. And 
here is everything through seven. Thank you.